Welcome to the Creating High Performance Athletes Podcast. I'm your host, Olympian Jonathan Edwards. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys, it's Jonathan, Olympic Jonathan. If you haven't already on TikTok, you can find me at Olympic Jonathan doing a lot of videos there, which is kind of fun. So if you got a young kid who doesn't do the Facebook thing, just do the TikTok thing. So um, good to see everybody. Helen Lang Evans, good to see you. Um, uh, leave me a comment. When you show up, leave me a comment. Say hi. Um, a lot of good stuff going on today. Just got started running a little bit late for my other Facebook Live. But um, uh, g- great stuff kind of going on. Uh, a lot of good feedback from a lot of our athletes. A lot of my athletes are in Europe um, right now. And um, uh, got some new new athlete clients in my athlete breakthrough blueprint um, which i'm thinking of changing the name of that to mental performance school <laughs> i think uh, it's kind of where i'm going to go with that but uh got some hockey guys uh, got some skiers like it's kind of it's a uh, it's uh, it's been a, a, a good week so um it is uh january it's the end of january in 2020 so we're three weeks in and uh, a lot of good stuff's happening today i want to talk about commitment um because uh, a question that is kind of coming up uh, repeatedly which is kind of weird is this idea of like when do we get serious about what we're doing and um what i find is that there's there's uh, even when families spend a significant amount of money with their athlete to pursue a certain uh path athletic path whether it's an olympic path whether it's a collegiate path um, it doesn't really doesn't really matter but even when those families are like invested there's still a little bit of hesitation um, there's hesitation from mom or dad about like, ah, is this going to work out? Like, is this really worth it? Right? Is this, uh, is this, um, uh, you know, why are we doing this? Uh, and then that hesitation kind of falls down to the athlete a little bit. And, um, and, and so I've, I've seen this even with, like, I heard about this last week with, a we're getting close to the, the Super Bowl, right? We're two weeks away from the Super Bowl. And uh, I heard an interview with an athlete, I can't remember which one it was, but he was like, you know, there was even some uncertainty in his voice about like, if he would ever make it this far, that sort of thing. And that's a really big deal. Um, Because if you're going along and you, and you, and you still think like this isn't, this might not happen, um, uh, then what, what can happen is that this can, um, that can pull you down. And uh, it can totally, it can, it can pull you down. And that's not, uh, that's not really what we want to have happen. Like we really want to be all in. And so one of the things that, um, one of the things that uh, happens with athletes is this idea that they, when they get better, then they'll get serious. But really it's the other way around. And one of the best ways to, to, um, one of the best ways to do this is to create an environment of success, right? Like, so um, it's, pardon me, as I type in some stuff here. Um, you know, when, when I moved to the Olympic Training Center from Boston to Lake, Lake Placid, New York, uh, then that was the environment. And you're thrown in this environment like, oh, okay, we're all going to the Olympics. We're all trying to be an Olympian. We're all trying to do this thing. And... But outside of this, like if you're in a, if you're in a non-Olympic sport and you're showing up to practice every day, well, now you're inundated with other people who are not as serious at you as you. And one of the things that I'm seeing across the board is athletes who are just trying to be so keen not to look keen, right? Um, they're trying, they're working really hard not to look like they're working really hard or that they want to work hard or that they could work harder. And um, so I want to encourage everybody who's listening to understand that it's okay for your athlete to say, hey, I want to be an Olympian or I want to play Division I hockey. I want to play Division I lacrosse. I want to do this or I want to do that. You know, it, because what happens a lot of times is, is parents will kind of shoot that down a little bit. They're like, well, may, you know, that'd be nice, sweetie, but we don't want you to be disappointed if it doesn't work out. You got to just eliminate that because you're going to be disappointed if it doesn't work out anyway. You don't need to talk about it now. Right. Because the question is like, well, what would happen if it really worked out? Like, that'd be fantastic. Right. And so so get going on that path. And so what's what's fascinating is like so I work with athletes as young as U10. 
uh, in a couple different sports and um, uh, skiing, hockey, soccer, things like, like that, lacrosse. Um, and, you know, of course, they're going to say like, hey, I want to be a Division One athlete or I want to go to the Olympics. And you know what? That's great. But the parent besides like, well, I don't know if that's going to happen. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't know. And they're like, well, he might not end up being Division One, or I don't think he's going to be Division One. Like if you're sending that energy to your kid, like, oh, it's it's so sweet. They want to be an Olympian, but I don't think they're ever going to be one. Then you're just you're, you're you're pulling the rug out from out from under them, and that's we don't want to do that, right? Um, because what happens is that every little thing your your athlete does, like so, let's say you invest money into a camp or some private coaching or a trip to Europe or you name it, you know, a new horse. <laughs> um, if your athlete is committed, they're going to get way more value out of that investment than if they're not committed, right? So we want to, so, so people, people will ask, like, well, what's the difference between an Olympic athlete and an athlete who's not, not an Olympian? And I always say it's intention. And I didn't necessarily know that when I was young. You know, I didn't necessarily know that, you know, I, I wanted to be an Olympian because that's what we were all at the Olympic Training Center, right? That's what we're doing. You pick a sport like luge or figure skating or skiing or, speed skating and what's the goal is predefined right the goal is predefined like it's it's if you go down this path you're going to be an olympian someday right if you do it right and so every single day your intention about what it is you're doing gets you even further but i would say like even when i was an olympian i wasn't necessarily um when i was on that path i wasn't fully conscious i was just in an environment every day that that's what i did and so sometimes your athlete has to make a conscious decision or you have to make a decision as a family. Like, listen, it's like, listen, if we're going to do this shit, let's do it, <laughs> right? Right? If we're going to do it up. If we're spending all this money, like, let's do it, all right? Because if you fail at it, that's a, as good a lesson, right? That, that's as good a lesson as, as, as making it, right? So, um, so the reason why I brought this up today was because I, I I got a phone call from an athlete who had been uh, transferred, like had been um, traded, okay, from one team to another, and now they're in the middle of all this kind of just what felt like political drama, whatever. But the more I talked to the athlete, the more I realized that the thing that was holding this athlete back at this point was was, and it's kind of a chicken and the egg sort of thing. It's uh, what happened first, right? So, so the fact that they got traded was a, a was a big kind of kind of a gut punch, right? And when you get punched in the gut, then you have doubt, right? You, the, your athlete starts to doubt, like, can I do this? Is my dream going to happen? Um, is it going to you know is it going to work out the way I wanted it to work, right? So that's natural. Like when you get when you have a big loss or you get cut or you know it's it, it's natural to go through that grieving process and. And, and you go through all the phases, right? But what can happen then, though, is that if you stay there, if your athlete stays there, then now, and they start looking outside, they start placing blame on things outside of themselves, then it's just this, like, perpetual spiral of, like, oh, you know, I'm blaming outside factors, and then my performance goes down, and my performance goes down, and then my, my belief in myself goes down, and then if my belief in myself goes down, then my belief in my dreams is definitely going to go down, and it's just a big a toilet bowl of anti-progress. But what I was, one well, of the first thing I did with this athlete was du- kind of double down on their goals and go like, well, listen, like, do you believe that you can still be, and we, we talked about what their goals were. And, you know, there was a long kind of pause, which was cool, which is okay. And, and it's Im- important to have a pause there, not to have some, some, some snap answer because it may not be the, 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 the correct answer. Um, but in this case, the athlete came back and said, no, 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 I'm still, I'm still capable of that. And I was like, okay, great. And so one of the things I put my athletes through is this process called goals plus one, right? So, so. And it's based on this idea of right, like, okay, you know, what what do you believe? What do you believe in? And and then what if you took it a step further? And so it's kind of that idea, like that really cheesy saying, like if you shoot for the moon and miss, you're still one of the stars, which is kind of bullshit. But um, but it's it, I shouldn't say that. It it's true though. It's like when you aim a step above, then then because most people under underachieve, right? They overestimate their ability and then they underachieve. So when they underachieve, they still get 
here, right? So, but the problem is that if you're just aim, aiming for that like sub goal, right? Then, you know, if, if so, if you're, if let, let's say, let's use this as an example, like let's say you're trying to make a team, like your athlete's trying to make a team and that's their goal is to make that next team. Well, what I see happen again and again is the athletes are just struggling to make that team. Whereas if they, they shoot for a goal above that, the plus one, then they, and I take them through a process to, to do that, then that goal of making the team just kind of happens, right? And so being committed allows these other things to just kind of fall away, right? So for this, for the athlete that I was working with, and I said, like, are you still, you know, do you still think you're capable of that goals plus one? And he goes, yeah. And so when we got back to that focus there, then all this other kind of peripheral stuff started to fall away. And then the goal, the, 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 the athlete could start to just kind of focus again and it, and it worked and it, and it just worked out and it worked out, um, to the point where, you know, they, things that were were then bu bugging them no longer was bugging them and they were able to kind of focus and refocus and then recommit. And then it was that spiral. It's the reverse toilet bowl, like everything's going up for the good. So, so I wanted to just share this today, this idea of like, as a family, it's, you also have to believe in things or else that kind of psychic weight like weighs down your athlete. Like if, if, if when you're, if when your athlete goes to bed, you know, mom and dad are sitting around the kitchen table going like, why the hell are we doing this? Right. Then that's a problem. That's a problem. Whereas if you can shift that gear and just go like, okay, listen, no, we're just all in, we're, we're all in, we're going to do this. Then that psychic energy now kind of fills the house and, and helps the athlete. Right. Um, and so, so, and then it's, so is that trickle down effect. You, if your athlete is U10 or U12 or U14, you know, you, you don't necessarily know where this is going to end up, right? I love that saying, like, man plans and God laughs, right? Man, you know, man plans, God laughs, right? So, so, but it's not your place as the adult in the room to kind of, to, to say, like, no, this is how I think it's going to go. Because you just don't know. You don't know, right? You totally don't know. So, so it you got to get your headspace around this. Like, okay, are we all in? Are we one foot in or are we all in? Because if you can be all in, right? If you can be all in, now things that you, people, places, resources that you can't see right now will start to show themselves, right? It's a little bit of a neurological trick, but it it, it works. And and so when you're trying to figure out a path, like maybe, you, you know, an athlete needs a sponsor or... Um, and I was talking to an athlete the other day in a very expensive sport, and they're spe the, you know their family spending fifty thousand dollars a year uh, for them to pursue their Olympic dream, and and so this athlete has been now retired for a couple of years, and looks back on it now with a little bit of space, time and space, uh, a little bit of less emotion, and and goes back and goes, you know, if I had just doubled down at that point, then this thing would happen and this thing would happen and this one they could see it now but they couldn't see it at the time and so that's what's kind of hard is, it, is that you know you're trying to figure this out as a family like is this going to work right is it, um, whereas if you just commit to the goal like commit you know you know maybe it's trying to get your kid uh, into college and playing their sport or they're on the olympic path like if you just double down and commit to it then stuff will start to fall into place but if you don't if you don't then you're gonna get distracted by everything else. Okay, so so that's the 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 the, the long and the short of it today was if you're having any sorts of doubts, right, about what it is your athlete's doing, you gotta just kind of you just gotta believe that. All right, listen, we're here for a reason. Like this 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 uh, this athletic dream is, has 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 befallen your house. <laughs> That's not the right word, but right. But it's like, it's landed on your house for a reason. If you can stick with it, um, if you can just commit to it and double down, then good things will be coming from that commitment. Then if you just leave it wishy-washy and then you get distracted. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if you're going to, um, put yourself in financial, fa financial distress. I don't know if, uh, something weird is going to happen or some tragic injury. Uh, you just, you don't know, but you don't plan for that either, 
right? There's, there's that saying, man who chases two, two rabbits loses both, right? And so one of the common things that, that people say a lot is like, oh, they'll start laying out percentages. Oh, 3% of all high school hockey players make it to college and 1% of that, they're all set to lay out all those statistics. And, and I love the story. I just picked up this book called uh, There's No Plan B for Your, uh, for your A-Game by Bo Eason. For those of you that can see me on my green screen here, um, this is the book. It's uh, Bo Eason played uh, played um, football for the San Francisco 49ers way uh, way back in the day, and he tells there's a great story in the book about um, uh, he goes to try out for his high school football team, and they measure all the guys' height and weight, and he's scrawny, like he should be the ball, um, and um, and he gets in the car and he tells his dad, he goes, dad, they, they measured everybody uh, for height and weight. And he goes, did they measure anybody for heart? <laughs> and, 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 and Bo, Bo answers back. He goes, I don't think they had a machine for that. <laughs> so, but then his dad tells him a story and I don't know if this story is true or not. I got to look it up, but I just like the story. So just bear, go with it here. Um, the story was like when they, when they raise, so they grew up on a farm. And, um, and in Northern California and he had like six brothers and sisters and, uh, and so his dad had like cattle. And so the story was that when, when they raise cattle dogs is that, you know, the mama dog has like, I don't know, eight, six, eight, 12 pups. I, I don't know, but they, they would tie a, um, they would tie a ribbon around the runt and, and then they would raise them. And the, they would tie, so the, 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 the runt always had the, the, the ribbon. And what they would do at the end was then they would give away or sell the other cattle dogs. And they would keep the runt because the runt to survive had to work like extra hard than anybody, than any of the other pups uh, to learn how to be a cattle dog. And if they survived, they kept that dog. And, and so, because it was worth more to them because they, they said like a good cattle dog was worth like five or six ranch hands. That's what they, that's what they, that's how they described it. And I really like that story because if you're having any doubt as to the kind of the success of your athlete and they're, and they're struggling, but they're still in it, they're still going, then they're going to come out stronger. Um, I was, I was talking the other night to an athlete who was, um, is a division one athlete and they are a walk-on, right? So what a walk-on means is that, is that they got to the college, uh, they picked a college, but the coach wasn't really thinking they were going to make it. Uh, and so, so, so this athlete is a walk-on the other athlete in their position on the team was like recruited when they were like 14. And so now they're 19. And so, you know, I told this athlete, I was like, listen, imagine this, imagine like you've been recruited, you've been committed when, so like five years ago, like you're 14, you don't, you don't know what the hell's going on at 14, right? And if somebody's, somebody pegs you at 14 and says like, okay, you're going to be, you're going to be our guy um, when you're college age. So what's, what do you think is going to happen? Well, you're probably going to coast a bit, don't you think? Like you're just going to go like, oh, I got it. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be good. People tell me I'm going to, I'm supposed to be good. Versus that other athlete who's like working for it, right? Who's going to come through that with better kind of life skills, right? Better emotional qualities. Probably that goalie that, uh, or that athlete that's, um, that's, uh, that's had to fight, right? So now they're on campus and they're fighting for a same position. And, you know, my money is on the athlete who's the walk-on, not the athlete who, uh, not the athlete who was told when they were 14, like, yeah, you're our guy right? It doesn't make sense. It's, it's kind of like the run to the litter, right? It's, it's that, it's that, um, you know, which one's got the ribbon around their neck. It's the one who's the walk on. So if your athlete is in that mode where, so they can be in two sides, right? So let's say your athlete is in that side where they've been pegged, right? And unfortunately I've seen this happen a lot, right? The athlete who's been pegged from a really young age, when, when, when tough times come, Right, I, I like I, I kind of view it like they've been they've taken a helicopter to the top of the mountain, right? And now let's say something comes up, let's say they get injured, or let's say they get uh, they get cut, or say something happens. Well, it's, that's like a windstorm that knocks them off the peak, right? And now they got to hike back up, but they never hiked before, right? So whereas the other athlete who had to hike the whole way, now they get blown off the top for whatever reason, 
but they're going to get back to the top way quicker because they've already gone down that path, right? They've already put in those hard yards, right? So, so I, I like, I like those stories just kind of as a representation of the, the, of the process, but it all comes down with, it all comes down with just your, your understanding as a family, like, all right, are we in, you know, are we in this or are we not? Okay. Are we not in this? Now, one of the things that I, I share, and I might have shared this last week, so I apologize if I'm doubling up here, but um, uh, the the idea of a parent having their own goals, um, so raising an athlete for a lot of our families now, it's like there's one parent like working full like full bore, the other parent may also be working, but there's usually one parent who's kind of the the kid courier or the athlete courier, the one kind of making the decisions and being that kind of team manager, that athlete manager. Um, and that's totally cool. And that takes a lot of bandwidth, right? But one of the things that I, what can happen though, is, is a lot of resentment can happen when that parent is like all in on their kid and they may be sacrificing other things that they would like to be doing. Okay. So there's obviously going to be a little bit of, uh, there's going to be a, a little bit of, um, uh, give and take here on what I'm about to say, but I, I recommend that the parent has some sort of activity, some sort of thing that they're invested in and that doesn't take a ton of time. So it, it, it takes them away from maybe doing the things that their athlete needs them to be doing for them. Um, but, but is like enjoyable. So maybe it's, maybe it's losing weight. Maybe it's, uh, I, I like, you know, the ideas of like, playing the piano or a ukulele, um, something small and, and not too expensive and something that can be done at home in, in, at a quick moment, right? Um, maybe it's learning how to solve a Rubik's Cube, okay? Um, you know, it could be any number of things, but just the idea that the, that the, the parent also has this thing that they're trying to achieve and now they're applying the same skills and, and, the same processes. Maybe it's something that the parent was doing a long time ago and they gave up, you know, now that they have kids, but you know, so, so just having that thing that they're doing so that they can then relate a little bit to what their athlete is doing. Right. And, and you may say like, as an adult, like, Oh yeah, I you know, I know, understand that. I understand what it's like to perform and I understand what it's like to, uh, commit to, to, to this, to, you know, maybe you were that athlete when you were young. Right. But, but there's something about having something current, right. Having something current, like you're learning a scale on a guitar or you are, um, uh, you know, yeah. Like you figured out one side of a Rubik's cube, right. Um, by the way, the books that teach you how to solve a Rubik's cube are really hard to read. And I think that's kind of good for your brain for life. But anyway, I digress. But just having something like that can also be helpful because it can remove a little bit of the stress because you're doing something for you as the parent. And then that takes a little bit of your mental bandwidth away from your athlete, which may be healthy um, for them, not feeling like you're maybe on them all the time. But but just going all in on something and going like, you know what, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to give me I'm going to give myself 90 days to learn this thing. That's going to help your athlete because when your athlete is going like, okay, it's a 90 day sprint while we're training for world championships or tryouts at the end of the summer or, um, you know, you know, a fun one is like, okay, maybe your athlete's trying to lose weight and you're going to try to lose a few pounds. Well, having that together, that's kind of cool, right? Right. Um, and, um, and, and so I'm, I'm a real fan of that because I, because what I want to see is the commitment. I, I, I want to see the, um, the cohesion and I want to see just the idea that, Hey, we're, we're, listen, we're all in on this and if it doesn't work, it's okay. Right. If it doesn't work out, it's okay. We're going to, we're going to go all in. We're going to come out with the right lessons and we're going to, we're going to take that with us. Right. Um, and that is really, really cool because otherwise what happens is let's say this doesn't work out. Right. And all you've done is now you're resentful to the time, energy, and money you put into this, this sport thing. And you feel like you're, you're no further ahead or worse. You feel like you are, um, you've gone in a completely different direction. Like you've wasted time and that's, we don't want that. Okay. So it all starts with commitment. Okay. Commitment makes a lot of problems go away. Commitment makes a lot of distractions go away. And, and if you can dive into that, 
um, and help your athlete dive into that, then, um, then good things will happen. I want to share this one last story. So, um, working with an athlete who is, um, so it is at a division one, uh, division one program. Um, and the, uh, but one of the things that this athlete has adopted is this idea of playing professionally. Okay. And, um, and so there's a, an interesting, an interesting situation comes up and the coach basically rips this athlete like verbally and which is never fun. Right. But it's part of, it's part of, it's part of coaching. Okay. Like I'm, I'm, um, I, I'm not one to quickly, uh, you know, if, if a coach yells at an athlete that the coach is bad, I, I don't believe that because my question to the athlete is what got you to this point? How far away from, uh, uh, how far away have we gotten from the path that this is the coach has to yell at you, right? Like what, because, because an athlete who is aligned with their goals should most likely be aligned with the coach's goals. And, and so this, for this to happen, it's, it's kind of weird. So anyway, the coach, coach rips this athlete, but the athlete is still, is still focused on this bigger goal. And, and what was great, it was the conversation, like like the coach is ripping the athlete and the athlete goes back to the coach on my recommendation and says, what do you mean by that? Now it takes the coach away from anger into productivity. And so, so now we're not having just a, just an emotional back and forth. The athlete goes, what do you mean by that coach? And the coach goes, what do you mean? What do I mean by that? And, And the athlete goes, just listen, explain it to me a little deeper. Now the coach has to backtrack a second and reframe what it is they're saying. And now comes at the athlete with a much more productive response. And the athlete turns to the coach and says, that's fantastic because I'm going to go pro. And the coach was like, thinking like right now what you're doing is not a, not professional at all. But, but the fact that they had just kind of the athlete had shared their commitment. Like, this is the way I want to go. Now the coach was like, all right, you want to do that? Then great, let's go. And so now the, the, the athlete and the coach are now mutually, they're all looking in the same direction, right? And whereas both of them were, had gotten so off track that now it was like, you know, and not productive, right? So, but when they're committed and committed to, committed to that future view, that future vision, now stuff, um, uh, now stuff made sense and stuff worked out and and the the future of that story was that or the what happened after that was that the athlete there were some moments now where the coach was like okay you're committed to that goal got it i'm going to speak to you in a certain way and then the athlete actually like later um made a mistake in a game and but came to the bench looked at the coach and just knew like the coach knew that the athlete knew the the and 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 then it was it was done there's nothing else that needed to be said. And the good, the outcome of that story is that they, the athlete has now proceeded on that path. And a lot of this extraneous stuff has kind of fallen by the wayside. And now the, and it all comes back to that athlete's commitment to the, in it, to, to their goal. Right. And, and so that can be scary. Right, and it can feel awkward because you don't want to be disappointed, you don't want to miss out, and you don't want to feel like you've wasted time, energy, or money, or whatever. But if you just commit to it, then good stuff will will happen. If you're fuzzy, if you're if you're if you're just kind of one foot in, one foot out, then you just attract all sorts of just crazy stuff. Okay, so and you don't want that. All right, so I want you to have a conversation with your athlete. If you're the athlete listening, I want you to think about this, and then I want you to go to your parents and 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 talk about your commitment to your goal. Like, what is it? Like, where do you want to end up? Right? Do you want to end up in college? Do you want to end up Division One? Do you want to go to the Olympics? Like, what is it? Like, what would be your dream thing? And start there, right? And then back up, and then slot in all the work that needs to be done, the things that need to improve to make it happen. Because once you do that, then this whole path gets a hell of a lot easier. All right. And if I can help you, right. If I want, if I can help you, then let's get on the phone and talk about some coaching, right? So you can email me at coach Edwards at athletespecific.com. And because I, 
want to help you get clear on so much of this stuff and and make all these dreams come true. And that's what I do. So I hope you've enjoyed this, whether you're listening to me on iTunes or on YouTube or on Facebook, please, please, please do me a favor. Share this with someone who needs to hear it, a parent, a coach, an athlete, right? Um, and invite them on in, invite them to follow me. Uh, for those of you that are on TikTok, you can follow me at, at, at Olympic Jonathan. I'm also on Instagram at Olympic Jonathan. Um, I'm on Facebook at Olympic Jonathan. And so, but um, for all my parents out there, um, and, and my athletes love you, sending you the best. Let's make this happen. All right. And I'll see you, see you next week. Cheers. Bye.